The wrought iron gates of Ravenswood Manor loomed before Samantha Ray, twisted and rusted like the secrets they guarded. Beyond, the mist-shrouded grounds sprawled in an untamed tangle of overgrown rose thickets and gnarled oak trees, their leaves whispering dark tidings on the chill October wind. Samantha shivered, pulling her leather jacket tighter as she shouldered her duffel bag, heavy with the tools of her trade. Ghost hunting equipment, holy water, a tattered journal of occult rituals passed down through generations of her family, all the weapons she'd need to battle the shadows gathering at the edges of her vision, and at the edges of her memory. She hadn't set foot here in nearly a decade, not since the night her father disappeared into the hedge maze, raving about a blighty bride and a curse that would doom them all. The night her world shattered like the antique mirror in the grand foyer, fractures spiderwebbing across the once unbreakable bond between her and her sister, Scarlet. Now Scarlet was all that remained of the Ray family legacy, presiding over the crumbling manor like a ghost herself. At least until three days ago, when Samantha received a frantic midnight phone call, Scarlet's voice trembling with barely contained terror. It's happening again, Sam. The whispers in the walls, the blood on the ballroom floor. And Damien? He's not himself anymore. Damien Blackthorne, de Bowl. Scarlet's new husband, a suave English aristocrat with gleaming raven hair and eyes like chips of arctic ice. Samantha had only met him once, at their whirlwind wedding a month ago, but his mere presence sent chills knifing down her spine. He reminded her too much of the entity that had corrupted her father. Cold, cunning, cloaked in shadow. And then the line went dead, Scarlet's choked sob echoing into silence. Samantha knew with grim certainty that the dark forces that had torn their family asunder all those years ago were gathering again poised to finish what they'd started, to claim the Ray sisters as their final victims. Over my dead body, Samantha vowed, squaring her shoulders as she marched up the gravel drive, dead leaves crunching underfoot. She'd faced ghosts and demons before. She'd made a career out of battling the things that went bump in the night. But this time, it was personal. And she wouldn't be facing this nightmare alone. Her hand drifted to the antique cross nestled in the hollow of her throat. A gift from Father Callum Byrne, her childhood friend and first love, now a priest waging his own war against the darkness. He didn't know it yet, but she needed his help, his strength, his unshakable faith. To save Scarlet. To unravel the cryptic clues in her father's final journal entry. To break the curse before it consumed them all. As if summoned by her thoughts, a figure emerged from the swirling mist beside the manor. Tall and broad-shouldered, clad in black jeans and a charcoal sweater, a silver cross glinting at his throat. Piercing blue eyes met hers across the fog-shrouded lawn, and her breath caught. Callum, ah. Unexpected emotion constricted her chest as he strode toward her, the heat of his gaze searing her despite the chill. It had been years since she'd let herself feel anything beyond the adrenaline rush of the hunt, the grim satisfaction of vanquishing evil. She'd buried her heart alongside her father's memory, sealed it away behind iron walls. But seeing Callum again, memories crashed unbidden through her mind. Stolen kisses in the shadow of the church altar, whispered promises in the dark, the brush of his hands on her skin, the agony of watching him walk away the price of the vows he'd sworn, and the ones she couldn't make. Samantha, dot, just a single word, but it shattered through her like holy lightning. You came, was all she could manage past the lump in her throat. His eyes softened, a ghost of a smile touching his lips. You know I'd walk through the fires of hell for you. You just might have to. She glanced past him to the waiting manor, Shadows gathering in the windows like a sinister audience. Did Scarlet tell you? About Damien? The curse? Callum's jaw clenched. Bits and pieces. But I can feel it, Sam. The darkness here. It's old and hungry. He looked back at her, gaze fierce with determination. We'll stop it. Together. Together. The word ignited a spark of hope in her chest even as dread coiled like a serpent in her stomach. She reached for his hand, fingers interlocking like puzzle pieces, and turned to face the crumbling manor. 
Ravenswood had secrets and sorrows etched into its very stonework. It would take all of their combined strength and faith to unravel the bloody threads of the past and the unholy forces gathering in the present. Fingers entwined, they walked into the waiting shadows, ready to confront the nightmare that awaited within, and the forbidden embers threatening to read night between them. The manor was exactly as Samantha remembered, and yet utterly foreign, like a once-beloved dollhouse left to molder and warp. Dust motes danced in the watery light filtering through floor-to-ceiling windows, illuminating ragged sheets draped over antique furniture. And everywhere the cloying scent of roses mingled with something sharper, metallic. Blood. Blood. Beside her, Callum tensed. Holy water vial gripped tightly in his fist. Do you feel that? The coldness? Samantha shivered, and not just from the unnatural chill permeating the air. It's here. Watching us. Her fingers trailed over the banister as they climbed the grand staircase, horals of carved ravens seeming to mock her with their empty eyes. Scarlet's room was at the end of the east wing, overlooking the maze. The maze where it had all begun and where it might very well end. Where was her sister? The bloodstains on the ballroom floor flashed through Samantha's mind, vivid and accusing. She quickened her pace, boots echoing too loudly on the parquet. The door to Scarlet's chamber stood ajar, spilling sick room light into the gloom. Samantha's hand trembled as she pushed it open, braced for the carnage her sixth sense warned her awaited within. But the room was pristine. Eerily so. White curtains billowed at the open window, admitting a breath of crisp autumn air. Atop the lace coverlet of the four-poster bed, a single crimson rose lay like a splash of blood. And at the vanity, gazing into the gilt-framed mirror with glassy eyes, sat Scarlet. Golden hair tumbled around a face pale as parchment, making the mocking red slash of her lips even more garish. She wore a gown of jet black silk that laced up the back like a burial shroud. Scarlet? Samantha forced the words past her numb lips. What? What happened? Where's Damien? Her sister turned slowly, a marionette with tangled strings. When she spoke, her voice was a rasping husk, devoid of emotion. He's gone. It took him. Callum frowned. What took him? Scarlet's haunted gaze met Samantha's in the mirror. The curse. The Blady Bride. Thy. She's been waiting all these years. For us. Ice tricked down Samantha's spine. The specter that had haunted their father. Driving him to madness. The veiled figure glimpsed between hedgerows, crimson blooms trailing in her wake. An ancestor wronged. An unholy vow of vengeance. The fragmented tails coalesced into a nauseous knot in Samantha's stomach. We'll find him, she said with more conviction than she felt. Damien might be a monster, but no one deserved the torment her father had endured. We'll stop this. There has to be a way to break the curse. Scarlet laughed, a hollow, bitter sound. Oh, my sweet, naive Sam. You have no idea, do you? She rose. Skirts whispering, and glided across the room to the window. Beyond, the maze crouched like a malevolent beast, shadows gathering in its tangled heart. It demands a bride. It always has. Our great-grandmother, Enid, was the first. Jilted by her true love, she slit her own throat on her wedding night, drenching her white gown crimson. And with her dying breath, she vowed to take her vengeance on this family on love itself. Samantha's heart clenched as another scrap of memory surfaced, her father's final journal entry, written in a shaking hand. It ends as it began, in the stone circle at the labyrinth's heart, where betrayed love spilled tainted blood. A key? A clue. She moved to join her sister at the window, Callum a steady presence at her back. Then that's where we stop. She pointed to the mausoleum nestled in the hedge's noxious embrace, a blight of dark stone. The burial vaults. Enid's tomb. Scarlet turned, and for a moment, Samantha glimpsed the frightened girl she'd once known, eyes wide and pleading. I can't go back there, Sam. I can't. The things I've seen. 
A choked sob escaped her throat, tears glinting like diamonds on her ashen cheeks. Callum rested a gentle hand on her shoulder. You won't face this alone. God will shield us. He met Samantha's gaze, the intensity in his eyes igniting a spark low in her belly, a tangle of fear and longing. You said we'd confront this together, Sam. Samantha swallowed hard, torn between the desperate need to protect her sister and the siren song of his conviction. In the end, the compulsion to unravel the mystery, to lance the festering wound that had poisoned her family for generations, won out. She took Scarlet's cold hand in hers, remembering a distant summer, chasing fireflies through this same maze, innocent and unafraid. Before the darkness crept in. Stay here, she said softly. We'll get to the bottom of this, Letty. I promise. Scarlet's fingers tightened briefly, a glimmer of the old affection sparking in her dull eyes. Then she turned back to the window, shoulders slumped in defeat. Be careful, Sam. Don't let it trick you, seduce you. Like it did, Damien. Like it did, Dad. Samantha's throat closed, a decade of unspoken grief threatening to choke her. But she forced it back, stealing her spine. She had a job to do. A curse to break. A sister to save. Even if it meant braving the nightmare labyrinth, facing the ghosts of a blighted past. Even if it meant unraveling the tangled threads of her own treacherous heart, the forbidden desire smoldering in Callum's too blue gaze. At the threshold, she paused. Mist curled beckoning fingers beyond the casement, the wind carrying a mournful whisper through the barren trees. Come, wind. Ah, tone. The bride is waiting. Nay. Samantha shuddered and reached for the holy water in her pocket for the talisman of her ancestor's journal. Beside her, Callum's hand brushed her elbow, steadying her. Together, they stepped out into the gathering gloom to brave the maze and the hungry shadows that lurked within. The maze rose before them like a leviathan, ancient and malevolent. Gnarled hedges twisted in impossible angles, their thorny depths seeming to pulse with a sickly green luminescence. The air hung heavy with the cloying scent of decay, undercut by the metallic tang of old blood. Samantha's heart hammered against her ribs as they approached the wrought iron gate, its rusted bars entwined with dead vines. She played in this maze as a child, innocently believing it to be a place of wonder and secrets. Now, she saw it for what it truly was, a labyrinth of horrors, a verdant prison for the tortured souls ensnared by Enid's vengeful curse. Beside her, Callum murmured a prayer, his breath misting in the chill air. The silver cross at his throat glinted as he raised his hand to touch it, a talisman against the gathering dark. In nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti, the ancient words washed over Samantha like a balm, momentarily quelling the terror thrumming through her veins. She'd never shared Callum's unwavering faith, but here, on the threshold of nightmare, she found herself drawing strength from his steadfast belief from his presence at her side, solid and sure. As if sensing her thoughts, he reached for her hand, his calloused fingers interlacing with hers. A jolt of electricity arced between them at the contact, a tangle of fear and longing, forbidden desire, and shared purpose. In that moment, Samantha knew with bone-deep certainty that whatever awaited them in the labyrinth's shadowed heart, they would face it together. Drawing a fortifying breath, she pushed open the gate, it swung inward with a grating screech, like the wail of a damned soul. Beyond, the maze unfurled in a dizzying tangle of paths, dense foliage blotting out the dying sun. Shadows pooled like spilled ink, and Samantha could have sworn they writhed with a sentience of their own. The mist curled around their ankles as they stepped over the threshold, tendrils coiling up their legs like grasping fingers. A shudder rippled through Samantha, as an unnatural cold seeped into her bones, an aching echo of the grave. Beside her, Callum's grip tightened, his jaw clenching as he surveyed the eerie tableau. Where to? He asked, voice hushed in the sepulchral stillness. Samantha closed her eyes, reaching out with her other senses, with the uncanny intuition that had guided her on countless paranormal investigations. 
The maze seemed to shift and sigh around her, an eldritch entity probing at the edges of her mind. Whispers skittered at the fringes of her consciousness, sibilant and seductive. Come, child, embrace your destiny. Become the bride, the sacrifice. Spill your blood on the altar of my vengeance. Her eyes snapped open, heart lurching painfully. The center, she managed, voice strangled. The burial vaults. That's where she's waiting. Callum nodded grimly, a muscle ticking in his jaw. Stay close. Don't let the shadows lure you astray. This place. It, it's not right. It's hungry. They set off into the labyrinth, footsteps muffled by the dense loam. The hedges seemed to lean in as they passed, grasping branches snagging at their hair and clothes. Several times, Samantha could have sworn she glimpsed a pale figure darting between the thorny corridors, the hem of a blood-soaked gown flashing like a wound in the gloom. At every turn, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. Images flickered behind her eyes like a corrupted film reel, her father's ashen face as the shadows claimed him, her mother's vacant stare as she withered like a rose deprived of sunlight. And scarlet, beautiful, broken scarlet, a crimson smile slashed across her throat. No! The scream tore from Samantha's lips before she could stop it, raw and ragged. She stumbled, nearly pitching headlong into the grasping thorns. Callum's arms locked around her, anchoring her. Samantha! Stay with me. It's not real. It's the curse, trying to break you. She clung to him, face pressed to the solid planes of his chest as sobs racked her body. The salt of her tears mingled with the familiar scent of him. Incense and old books, the beeswax he used to polish the pews. For a moment she was a girl again, sheltered in his embrace. The horrors of the world held at bay by his strength, his steadiness, his faith. I'm here, he murmured into her hair, calloused hand cupping the back of her neck. I've got you, Sam. We'll get through this. Together. She nodded against his chest, drawing a shuddering breath. The warmth of his touch seeped through her, chasing away the grave chill, the insidious whispers. Slowly, she disentangled herself, meeting his gaze. In the stormy blue depths, she saw her own fear reflected, her own longing. And beneath it all, the unwavering glimmer of something infinitely more profound, love, pure and radiant as the first light of dawn. It stole the breath from her lungs, the words from her tongue. In that suspended moment, the shadows and secrets fell away, the years of denial and distance crumbling like the walls of Jericho. There was only him, only this, the true three of what had always burned between them, bright as a bonfire in the dark. Then a piercing scream shattered the silence, echoing from the labyrinth's heart. Scarlet. Dot. Samantha whirled, the spell broken, cold dread flooding her anew. We have to hurry, she gasped out, already plunging headlong into the maze. She's in danger. The shadows surged hungrily around them as they ran, the hedges blurring into a single mass of grasping thorns. Roots twisted beneath their feet, seeking to ensnare, to halt their desperate flight. And beneath it all, rising like a hellish chorus, the whispers swelled to a deafening cacophony. Too late, too late. The bride is chosen, the blood is spilled. The pact is sealed, the vengeance fulfilled. They burst into the clearing at the labyrinth center, chests heaving hearts pounding. The ancient stone of the burial vaults rose before them, crawling with dead vines like the veins of a desiccated corpse. An altar stood at its base, stained dark with centuries of ritual. And there, sprawled upon the stone, lay scarlet. Crimson pooled beneath her body, soaking her white gown, vivid as a slash of lipstick. Her once bright hair fanned around her ashen face, like a halo of tarnished gold and standing over her, eyes glittering with triumphant malice, was Damien. In his hand, an antique dagger dripped scarlet, the rubies adorning its hilt pulsing like freshly harvested hearts. He smiled, cold and cruel. Ah, Samantha. Just in time to join the festivities. 
The curse demands its due, you see. A willing bride. Ah, the blood sacrifice. His gaze raked over her, diseased with unholy hunger. And who better than you, my dear? The prodigal daughter returned to the fold at last. Callum stepped protectively in front of Samantha, holy water vial raised. Stay back, demon. Your reign of terror ends here. Damien laughed, a sound like shattering glass. The shadows behind him roiled, coalescing into a feminine form, skeletal but beneath a tattered veil. Enid. The bleedy bride herself, called forth by the offering of tainted blood. You have no power here, priest, Damien hissed. This ground is consecrated to a darker god, to the forces of vengeance and ruin. And soon your precious Samantha will join her sister in eternal bondage. He lunged, dagger flashing, just as Enid's spectral form surged forward with a vengeful shriek. Callum met the charge with a cry of his own, the blessed water sizzling as it struck the unholy entities. Samantha scrambled for her duffel bag, fumbling for the salt, the sage, anything to ward off the malevolent forces bearing down on them. But it was too late. A bolt of searing agony lanced through her chest as the blade found its mark, the dagger's cursed metal ripping, burning. The last thing she saw before the darkness claimed her was Callum's stricken face, his agonized scream ringing in her ears. Then the shadows rushed in, cold and final, and she knew no more. Darkness. Cold and suffocating, pressing in from all sides. Samantha drifted in the void, tethered to her body by the thinnest thread of pain, of flickering consciousness. Distantly, she could hear sounds of struggle, of shouting. Callum's voice, raw with anguish, chanting words of power. The shrieks of the damned as holy water scorched their ectoplasmic flesh. But it all seemed so far away, muffled by the cottony thickness filling her head, her limbs. She felt disconnected, adrift, like a shade slipping free of its mortal coil. Was this death, then? The yawning abyss? The siren song of eternal slumber? No. Not yet. A spark of defiance flared in her chest, bright and burning. She couldn't abandon Callum, couldn't leave Scarlet to the curse's insatiable hunger. She had to fight, to claw her way back to the light, no matter the cost. With a monumental effort, she forced her leaden eyelids open. The world swam into focus, hazy and haloed in crimson. She was lying on the cold stone of the burial vault floor, the coppery taste of blood thick on her tongue. The dagger protruded obscenely from her chest, its jeweled hilt winking in the guttering torchlight. Gritting her teeth against the agony, she reached up and closed her fingers around the blade. The metal seared her skin, radiating a malevolent energy that made her stomach roil. But she tightened her grip, steeling herself. One sharp tug and it would be over. She could bleed out here on this unhallowed ground, another victim of Enid's vengeful curse. Or she could rise, face the darkness head on, and damn the consequences. Callum's anguished cry cleaved through the haze, galvanizing her. With a ragged scream, she ripped the blade free, feeling it grate against bone, tear through flesh. Searing agony exploded behind her eyes, widening out her vision. But she embraced it, let it fuel her, transmute into something fierce and defiant. Staggering to her feet, she clutched the bloody dagger in one hand, the other pressed to the gushing wound in her chest. The scene before her was like something out of a nightmare, Callum grappling with Damien, the two men locked in a deadly struggle. Enid's spectral form hovering over Scarlet's prone body, skeletal hands outstretched, dark energy crackling between her fingertips. No! Samantha's scream tore through the chamber, raw and ragged. She launched herself at the ghostly bride, brandishing the dagger like a holy relic. You won't take her, you bitch. Your curse ends here. The blade sank into ectoplasmic flesh with a sickening hiss, eliciting an unholy shriek from Enid. The specter rounded on Samantha, bridal veil fluttering like moth wings, empty eye sockets blazing with hellish light. Foolish girl, Enid hissed, voice like nails on a chalkboard. You think you can defy me? I am eternal, undying. 
My vengeance will never be sated. She lashed out with grasping skeletal fingers, the dark energy sizzling as it struck Samantha square in the chest. Agony seared through her, dropping her to her knees. The dagger clattered from her nerveless fingers as she doubled over, retching bile and blood. Through the haze of pain she dimly registered Callum crying out her name, his voice cracking with desperation. The sounds of struggle intensified, the wet crunch of bone, the meaty thud of flesh on flesh. Then Damien loomed over her, lips peeled back in a feral snarl, hellfire dancing in his eyes. You never learn, do you, Samantha? He sneered, one hand clamped over the bleeding gash in his side. Always the hero, always trying to save everyone. But you can't even save yourself. He raised the bloody dagger high, unholy glee contorting his once handsome features. In that suspended moment, as the blade arced towards her throat, time seemed to slow. Samantha's gaze locked with Callum's across the chamber, a thousand unspoken words passing between them. Love? Regret? A fierce and defiant hope. Then, in a blur of motion, Callum wrenched free of Damien's hold. He launched himself at the other man with a wordless cry of rage, holy water vial shattering against Damien's chest. The blessed liquid sizzled as it net corrupted flesh, eliciting an inhuman howl of agony. Damien staggered back, clawing at his smoking skin. The dagger fell from his grip, clattering to the stones. Seizing her chance, Samantha snatched it up and advanced on Enid lips peeled back in a snarl of her own. Your vengeance dies with you, she gritted out, each word underscored by the white-hot lance of pain in her chest. No more brides, no more blood. This ends now. Enid's spectral form quivered, dark energy crackling around her like a cloak of living shadow. You cannot kill what is already dead, she rasped, skeletal fingers curling into claws. My curse is woven into the very fabric of this place, into the blood and bone of your accursed lineage. Then I sever that thread, Samantha shot back, raising the dagger high. With blood and blade, I cast you out. With my last breath, I break this chain of sorrow and suffering. Be gone and trouble us no more. She brought the dagger down in a vicious arc, feeling the resistance as it cleaved through ectoplasm, through centuries of festering hate. Enid screamed, a sound like the shattering of glass, the death knell of a thousand tortured souls. Spectral blood sprayed in an obsidian arc, splattering Samantha's face, her clothes, the weathered stones of the burial vault. For a moment, the world held its breath. Then, with a final rattling shriek, Enid dissipated, shredded into tattered shadows by the cold iron of the blade. The curse, at long last, was broken. Samantha sagged, the dagger tumbling from her nerveless fingers. The world tilted around her, colors bleeding together like a watercolor painting left out in the rain. Distantly, she registered Callum's shout of alarm, his strong arms coming around her as she crumpled. He lowered her gently to the ground, cradling her against his chest. Tears carved gleaming tracks through the grime and blood on his face as he fumbled for the rosary at his throat. Stay with me, Sam, he pleaded, voice cracking. Don't you dare leave me, not now. Not like this. She reached up with a trembling hand, cupping his jaw. Her fingers left smears of scarlet on his stubbled skin, a macabre mirror of the blood blossoming across her ruined shirt. You have to let me go, she whispered each word an agony. It's the only way. No. The denial was fierce, unwavering. He clasped her hand against his cheek, eyes blazing with that same defiant hope. I won't lose you, Samantha. I can't. Not again. With his free hand, he traced the shape of the cross on her forehead, her lips, her heart. The ancient words of the last rite spilled from his tongue, fervent and desperate. A benediction, a plea. As the darkness crept in at the edges of her vision, Samantha felt a curious sense of peace settle over her. The pain was distant now, fading. In its place was a warmth, a light, emanating from the place where Callum's fingers rested over her stuttering heart. I love you, she breathed, the words a sigh, 
a prayer. I always have. I'm sorry it took me so long to say it. Shh. He pressed a tender kiss to her forehead, his tears mingling with her own. Save your strength, love. You're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. But even as he spoke the words, Samantha could feel herself slipping away. The world was fading, the colors leaching out like the blood seeping from her wounds. Callum's face swam before her, blurred by the encroaching shadows. With a final rattling breath, Samantha surrendered to the dark. The last thing she heard before the void claimed her was Callum's broken whisper, an echo of her own dying declaration. I love you too. Darkness. An endless, yawning void, cold and absolute. Samantha drifted in the black, untethered, weightless. The pain, the fear, the desperate fight for survival, all of it faded away, distant echoes of a life left behind. Was this death then? The final journey, the last passage? She'd always imagined it would be different, a bright light, a sense of peace, loved ones waiting to welcome her on the other side. Not this unending nothingness, this aching absence. But then, perhaps this was her penance. Her soul's reckoning for all of the years she'd spent running from her past, her legacy. All the time wasted in denial of her own heart's deepest truth. A. Salem. The thought of him pierced the void, a lance of pure, bittersweet yearning. In the end, she'd finally found the courage to voice what had always lived unspoken between them, that profound, unwavering love, strong enough to defy curses and fate itself. But it had come too late. A deathbed confession, a tragic denouement to their story's cruel twists. If only she'd been braver. If only she'd trusted in the power of that love, in the strength of their bond. If only... A sudden warmth bloomed in the darkness, a flicker of golden light. It pulsed like a heartbeat, like the rhythm of an ancient chant. Slowly, it resolved into a shape, a cross, limbed in radiant white. Callum's rosary. The one he traced over her cooling skin as he murmured the last rites, his tears falling like rain. As he begged her to stay, to fight. Fight. Yes. The word kindled a spark in her chest, a defiant flare of hope. She wasn't ready to surrender, to slip quietly into the dark. Not now, not like this. Not when there was so much left to live for, to love for. With a monumental effort, she reached for the glowing cross. Her spectral fingers passed through it, but the warmth intensified, spreading through her like molten sunlight. It chased back the shadows, filled the aching hollow in her soul. And then she heard it, his voice, distant but achingly clear, calling her name, calling her home. Samantha, da. Callum's voice cracked on a sob, raw and ragged with grief. Please, love, come back to me. I need you. I can't do this without you. Tears, hot and stinging, slipped down her cheeks. She wanted to answer him, to reach out and smooth away the anguish in his tone. But the void held her fast, an intractable prison. Then, miraculously, another voice joined Callum's. Weaker, thready, but unmistakable. Sam. Scarlet. Daya. Her sister, alive and fighting. You saved me. You saved us all. But it's not over yet. We need you. Please, come back. Their voices twined together, a lifeline in the dark. A tether, drawing her up and out of the abyss. Samantha clung to it, let it fill her up, ignite that fierce, unquenchable spark at her core. Fight, damn you. Callum gritted out, his voice cleaving through the shadows like a blade. Fight for me, for Scarlet. For the life we could have, the love we could build. You're stronger than this darkness, Samantha. You always have been. His words poured into her like molten steel, shoring up her crumbling edges, soldering the fractures in her soul. With their strength, their love, she could do this. She could claw her way back to the light, back to the land of the living. Back to him. With a gasp and a shudder, Samantha's eyes flew open. 
Light, blindingly bright, seared her vision. The acrid smell of antiseptic and fresh linen filled her nostrils, chasing away the lingering scent of blood and grave rot. Oh my god! Sam? Scarlet's tear-streaked face swam into focus, hovering over her. You're awake. You came back to us. Wah! Samantha's voice cracked, her throat raw and dry as a bone. She swallowed thickly, tried again. Where am I? What happened? The hospital, Scarlet replied, smoothing a cool hand over Samantha's brow. You've been an unconscious for days, ever since. Her voice hitched, fresh tears spilling down her cheeks. We thought we'd lost you. Memories rushed back in a dizzying torrent. The confrontation in the burial vault, the breaking of the curse. Enid's final haunting scream as the dagger found its mark. The searing agony of her own wounds, the coppery taste of blood on her tongue. Callum's stricken face, as the darkness dragged her under. Callum, dot. His name tore from her lips, desperate and raw. She struggled to sit up, ignoring the lancing pain in her chest, the tug of IVs and monitors. Where is he? Is he all right? Shh. Easy. Scarlet gently pressed her back against the pillows. He's fine, Sam. Thanks to you. He hasn't left your side for more than a few minutes since they brought you in. As if summoned, the door to her hospital room swung open. Callum stood frozen on the threshold, his face haggard, eyes rimmed with shadow and strain. His clothes were rumpled, his dark hair mussed, as if he'd been running frantic hands through it. But when his gaze locked with hers, the raw emotion shining there stole her breath. Love? Incandescent and unconditional. Relief, staggering in its intensity. And a fierce, unshakable joy, bright as the dawn after an endless night. Samantha. Her name on his lips was a prayer, a benediction. He crossed to her bedside in two strides, falling to his knees and gathering her hands in his. Tears traced silvery tracks down his stubbled cheeks as he brought her fingers to his lips, kissing each knuckle reverently. You came back to me. I heard you calling me, she whispered, clutching his hands like a lifeline. In the dark. You brought me back. He exhaled a shuddering breath, resting his forehead against their joined hands. I thought I'd lost you. When you collapsed in my arms, when I felt your heart stop, a ragged sob escaped him, his shoulders shaking. I've never known such terror, such despair. The thought of living without you. Shh. Nine not the nine years to our right. She freed one hand to cup his jaw, tilting his face up to hers. I'm here, love. I'm not going anywhere. Not again. Their lips met in a kiss that was a vow, a covenant. A promise of forever, sealed with the salt of their mingled tears. In that perfect, Shining moment, the last lingering shadows fled. The past, with all its pain and sorrow, lost its hold. There was only this. Only them. Only the radiant future stretching out before them, a canvas waiting to be painted in the bright colors of love and new beginnings. As they finally surfaced for air, Scarlet tactfully slipped out of the room, a knowing smile on her lips. Callum climbed onto the narrow hospital bed, gathering Samantha into his arms with exquisite care. She nestled into his warmth, head pillowed on his chest. The steady thrum of his heartbeat, strong and sure, filled her entire world. A lullaby, a love song. Let's leave this place, she murmured, fingers tracing idle patterns on his chest. When I'm discharged, let's go somewhere far away, somewhere untouched by curses and shadows. Somewhere we can start over. Just you and me. Anywhere, he vowed, pressing a tender kiss to her temple. I'd follow you to the ends of the earth, Samantha Ray. In this life and whatever comes after. She smiled against his skin, letting her eyes drift closed. For the first time in a long time, perhaps the first time ever, Samantha felt truly at peace. Not running, not hiding. Just home.